Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this regular to the Comp video, we're going to be back talking about AMD's line of graphics cards. Note I didn't say the 490 specifically there, because as we're going to be discovering throughout this video, things may be a bit more complex than we first anticipated. This is, by the way, also an article which, as usual, is found linked in the description of the video. I'm trying to spice things up a bit here, don't you know? Anywho... We've all expected to see some form of high-end graphics card in the Polaris lineup. Now, the most obvious example would be the 490. It's fair to say that the Polaris lineup, that would be Polaris 10 and Polaris 11, so the 460, 470, and 480, have been very impressive from AMD, but they've also had one frustrating flaw. There's not really been anything to compete against, let's say, the GTX 1070 or above. Currently, the driver revisions from AMD for the uh, RX 480, for example, have definitely netted some impressive gains, but obviously there's no way it can compete with the GTX 1070, which leaves customers really with no choice but to go with NVIDIA. And we've heard quite a lot of rumours about the 490. However, this is where things start to get a bit spicy. Now, we've certainly seen some benchmarks, supposedly, of a device known only as... Well, it's a very elegant name, 687F colon C1, and that was running on Ashes of the Singularity. Now, that code name is extremely similar to the Polaris 10 core, which is 67DF colon C7. But a user by the name of Gigamax, who is a chap on Tony Mac x86 forum, has spotted a very interesting entry in the Mac OS Ciara. Uh, driver. Now, if you open this in a hex editor, there are three very interesting alarm bells which go ding, 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 ding in your brain. The first entry is Polaris XT2, the second being Polaris 12, and the third is Vega 10. Now, this obviously means multiple things. The first and most obvious being that it shows that AMD are working on these devices concurrently. In other words, it's not like they are just saying, hey, we're going to release Polaris at, let's say, and I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass, let's say March um, the 11th, and we're going to release Vega in, let's say, June the 10th, it's possible that these cards may come on the shelves at very similar timings. Now, what we start having here is a very interesting set of questions. You might say to yourself, let's start with Polaris 12, because you might say, well, gee... What is that? Is that a lower end part than, let's say, the Polaris 11 based G uh, RX 460? No, not necessarily. You see, the weird thing about Polaris is that, just like most GPUs, they start creating the big core first. The big core, in the case of Polaris, of course, is the one found in the RX 480, and then a slightly cut down version, let's say for yield reasons, which don't quite have all the compute units or whatever running. That will be found in the RX 470. However, they are still the same core, which is, once again, Polaris 10. Polaris 11 is redesigned, it's shrunk down, and that is the core that's found in the 460. Now, it's important to note, however, that it's not necessarily that Polaris 11 is named Polaris 11 because it's the lower-end card, and therefore the higher the number, the more powerful the GPU which was a common misconception, it's actually the reverse. It's actually that it's just the date they created it internally. In other words, it's like me saying to you, well, 10 is first, and then you create 11, and then you would create 12. So in short, you could have a GPU, in theory, that's 30 times more powerful than Polaris 10, but you would perhaps call it Polaris 12. And obviously, there's no way it's going to be anywhere near that powerful. I'm simply using it as an example. So don't, you know, say that Paul said it on Red Gaming Tech. No, no, it's only an example. I have to be very careful with the verbiage I use. So what that means is a very interesting set of scenarios. Because Polaris 10 XT2 is pretty obviously hinting at a dual card. Now... The only reason we believe that these GPUs, or there is going to be a 490, is because, once again, we've seen a couple of leaks. Uh, perhaps the most recent would be 
E. Valkyrie, which recommended a 490. We've, of course, seen the rather infamous by now Sapphire a help slash support page, which listed the 490 and a couple other bits and bobs too, which I won't go in through all of them. But suffice to say, each and every one of these listed the card, and all of them who listed the amount of memory on the card also listed it at 8 gigabytes, which is particularly interesting because the GPU had been pegged once again with Crossfire, so we expected basically two cores to basically plonked on the same PCB. If it's only 8 gigabytes total on the board, either AMD are not going the typical marketing approach, which would list 16 gigabytes, which is highly unlikely, or the second option is they're doing things a bit differently. And I had theorized, along with a couple of other folks who've messaged me, that it's highly possible that they've simply amalgamated the two cores. Just to clarify, once again, as of the time I'm recording this, the highest end part we've known of so far with Polaris 10 is Polaris 10 with 36 compute units. So it's possible that XT2 is basically two Polaris 10 cores strapped together. So it might not have all the compute units of a full RX 480, for example, it might have, and once again, this is only a theory, I have no rumours or evidence to point this out, I'm just simply saying it. it could have, let's say, 30 compute units or 32 compute units, leaving a grand total of, let's say, 64. That does leave the question of what the balls is Polaris 12. It could be a revision of Vega. Now, remember, one of the earlier rumors we heard this year was that there were going to be two marks of Vega. That did make, make no sense whatsoever. Two versions of Vega. There you go. I can English if I try. So the two versions are going to be named Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Now, obviously, these are all Chinese whispers. Basically, Polaris 10 would be the high-end cards. You and I can call them the Furies for the sake of this video. Whereas the Polaris Vega 11 would essentially be a rebranded Polaris. And by rebranded, I don't just mean it's stacked on with, you know, a different name. There would be some revisions as well made onto the card and presumably a slightly tweaked architecture. So this leaves us with a couple of possibilities in this video, and I would love for you all to speculate, because we certainly got a little bit further when everyone started to chip in in the previous videos. The first option is that the 490 is a placeholder name. It is not a real card. Yes, companies are using the name 490, but it's either that it was a placeholder name to begin with, or... AMD decided just to cancel it and just to call it the 500 series. The second option is that the 490 is going to be a dual card, so it's going to be Polaris 10 based, and let's say for the sake of argument we get that in February, and then let's say three months later-ish, two, three months later, they release Polaris 12, which is a basically a slightly tweaked version of Polaris, which has, let's say, the feature set of Vega, and Vega, therefore, becomes the high-end part. So, Vega, you can say Vega would be the equivalent of the Titans, or perhaps the GTX 1080, or, let's say, in AMD's own terminology, the Fury cards, whereas Polaris 12 would be a redesigned, tweaked version of the same GCN architecture found in Vega, but it would, let's say, take up the slack. It would fit rather nicely between the Golf, between the 480 and, or the current GTX 1060, and compete with, let's say, the GTX 1070, possibly up to the middling GTX 1080. The only problem with that, and the only thing that I'm shooting myself in the foot with, is that, well, the results of the rather elegantly named co uh, codename 687FC1, which we presumed was the dual part, also known as 490 or whatever the hell it's going to be called, it has a performance which is very equal to the card um, of the 1080. So it's possible that the... I'm just going to call it 687F rather than reading the whole thing out because I'm going to just go insane by the end of this video. It's possible that that is actually Polaris 12. And unfortunately, we do not know. And that's the kicker. Now, 
the final option, and this one is perhaps the most unlikely scenario, but it is at least worth mentioning for due diligence sake, it's the same thing as perhaps what's happened a couple of times in the past, and that is it's either a card specifically for, let's say, the Chinese market or a particular region, or it is specifically for, let's say, a MacBook or another device. I'm somewhat reluctant to call that, though. I, I, I don't think AMD would do that. With that said, I don't have a, you know, inside knowledge. It's not like um, I can just waltz into their studio and ask someone who works there because they're not going to tell me, unfortunately. They'd probably say, who is this crazy individual? Please get him out before he, you know, axe murders someone. So it's probable instead that um, we're probably going to have to just wait. And are we going to have to wait until New Horizon? Well, possibly. Because, as we all know, December the 13th is the date that AMD are going to host the New Horizon event, also known as Woohoo, we finally get to know more about Zen. Or perhaps Ryzen, if it's the name. I'm not super happy about the name Ryzen, but meh, whatever. Um, so, if they do choose to show that New Horizon event, Zen, it is possible they'll also hint at the existence of either the 490 or show more of Vega. Now, do remember, there was an event called Capsaicin. Um, I can't remember the date of it, to be honest, but it was when they basically were debuting uh, Polaris. And even back then, one thing they did do is hint at, well, you know, then. Because it makes sense. They don't just want to leave you on a high note of, oh, this is what we've got. They want to then say... By the way, here's the other thing that you're interested in. Find out more about that at XYZ time. Personally, I'm actually really excited about all of these developments. The only problem, and it's not AMD's fault or NVIDIA's fault or any company's fault, is it makes buying over the holiday period, especially for GPUs, an absolute bitch. Because you just do not know what to purchase. Like, do you jump on a GTX 1070 or a 1080? Or do you wait? Do you buy, uh, just thinking, sod it, or just, you know, make do? But with the rebrand or rebadges or whatever the hell's going to happen with NVIDIA, supposedly they're going to um, make a few tweaks to the GeForce GTX 10, uh, 10, uh, sorry, 10 architecture. Jesus Christ. 10 architecture, which is going to be then, of course, known as the GTX 11, theoretically. That supposedly is going to run at high clock speeds. We've got Vega, possibly Polaris. It's a bit of a mystery and a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, hopefully you've all enjoyed the video. I'm going to let you all go. Normal things, if you can like the video, share it, subscribe, bring me cookies. That would be absolutely appreciated. I'll let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye.